resilience, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. Some say that we as leaders should have resilience naturally. Of course, that's not the case. Even before the year 2020 and the pandemic, resilience was a big topic in the leadership industry, in the community, in business and in life in general. And now after the pandemic, well, it's become even more important. So it is very important to understand what resilience is, why it's important and what we can do to become a little bit more resilient. And that is what I'll be talking in this video about. Now, I do have some bad news to share. You can't learn resilience. But don't tune off yet because there are a few things, there are habits and traits that you can develop that will support resilience. So keep watching. Oh, by the way, if it's the first time for you here, my name is Karl Dirk Liefert. Here in this community, we want to learn, lead and live together. And if it's not the first time and you have seen me a couple of times and haven't clicked that subscribe button, now is the time. Now let's get back into our video. Why is resilience important? As a leader, that seems a fairly obvious answer because the people who you lead, they look up to you. They want to know that everything's going to be all right. They want to know that you have thought of the problems and difficulties that lie ahead and that you also are confident of your solutions. But even if you don't lead others, if you just lead yourself, you still have to look up to yourself. It's called self-confidence. And the more self-confidence you have, the more resilient you will be. There is another interesting fact why resilience is very important. Because as humans, we have an undeniable tendency to overestimate risks and problems. And that leads to giving up too early. You come across a problem and you want to give up because you think the risk is far too high. Those are certainly very good reasons to develop resilience. But as I said before, you can't learn resilience. What do I mean by that? Let's find out. See, here's the thing. Resilience in itself isn't a trade, a habit or a skill. And that's why you can't learn it. But there are a few habits, traits and skills that you can develop and that will support a more resilient way of looking at life. And those are the things that I want to talk about now. The first of those traits is self-awareness. Think about it. If you just want to stick things out and if you want to overcome difficulties but you don't know yourself, that's called stubbornness. But you do need to understand yourself, your strengths and weaknesses, because if you do want to have the capacity to overcome difficulties, you need to understand what strengths you can build on. You also need to understand your weaknesses so that you can bring in help from outside with your colleagues, with your boss, with other people around you to overcome those weaknesses or to complement your skill set so that you can overcome difficulties. A second trait that is quite related to the first one is not being afraid of your weaknesses. When you are able to admit weaknesses, you are also far more able to accept help from the outside. And that is exactly what sometimes is required to accept help from the outside to overcome those difficulties. This is why many companies today have a culture of collaboration, not only within the company, but even with their competitors. Here's a quick bonus tip for you on not being ashamed of weakness. And that is you may think about receiving constructive criticism. Very important, but I dare you to go one step further that when you've received constructive criticism, that after you have overcome that specific problem or weakness, you go back to the person who brought it up and you tell them about it. This is truly not being afraid of weakness. And you will be surprised about how many people after that wish to help you. Here's another habit that you can develop to become more resilient. And that is to be more comfortable with uncertainty. Nobody could have expected what would happen in 2020. But one thing that the year taught us is that we can deal with uncertainty. Yes, sometimes not as well as we would like to. But when things happen to us, we react. And the more we practice that reaction, the better we get at it. 
One of the things that is most important is trust in other people. See, it's a very scary thing to trust others. They may disappoint you. They may do things in a different way that you are used to or that you would envisage things to be done. But the more trust you can place into your employees, into people around you, into your friends, the more comfortable you become in living with uncertainty. And the more you do that, the more capacity you develop to be resilient in the face of uncertainty. And the fourth thing that I want to mention is that as a leader or as a person, have a wider perspective and vision. Just recently, I watched a video from Simon Sinek about vision and what he said stuck with me. He described three requirements for having a vision. One was that it should be independent of cultural, political or technological change. That's a tough one. Think about it. A lot of visions that we have, a lot of perspectives that we have are technologically driven or they are based on a certain culture, on a certain political agenda. But if you can create a vision that goes beyond that, then you'll also have the openness to deal with problems that sometimes arise because of cultural, political or technological difficulties. The second requirement he stated was that it needs to be inclusive. And the third thing Simon mentioned about the vision is that it needs to be service oriented. This last one we can practice immediately because for a very low price of zero dollars, you can hit that like button. If you do so, you support the vision of this channel, you help spreading the message further. Thank you very much for that. Consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't done so. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mm -hmm.